All right, when we start with the swing, I begin from the ground up, all right, because each swing, or every swing, works in a sequence up the body. So if you think of it like a long row of dominoes falling one by one, it starts with your feet, and everything that happens from there is going to affect the next domino, the next piece. So when we talk about your stance and your negative move, the stance is fine, very similar to what you see with Andre Ethier here. But the reason why I have him on is it's very pronounced that his knees are inside his ankles. And you're going to see in your negative move, one of the things that we're going to clean up is that your knee gets over your ankle during the negative move. It shifts back too much. You're going to see that real quickly here. And that doesn't affect uh, the big thing we're going to talk about on the pitch away, but it is something that is going to make you lose a little sequencing and power at speed. So your negative move goes back against your back leg, not over it. So I want you to shift the weight to the inside part of your thigh and inside part of your foot, but it doesn't go to the outside part of your leg. And that happens when your knee gets over your ankle. In the swing, we're trying to create horizontal energy that way. When your knee gets over your ankle, similar to when you jump, you're creating vertical energy. So you're pressing down and you're going to move back up. So typically here I'm going to see that back knee unload or unbend. And the purpose of the negative move is to get weight into the back side that you can use during the swing. Right? So we can do the same load. You don't have to change that. You just got to do it less. It's going to be a very small negative move to get the weight against the back leg and not over it. And you'll see that with Ethier here on this side. You can go back as much as you want. Balls and knee stays inside the ankle. So how much is he shifting back right there? It's not at all. Yeah, it's never, not very much, right? So it's what you'll see with all those big league guys. Is the load is something that's been coached to you. You understand it. But it's been overcoached to most, most hitters your age. You do it too much. And so it takes too long, and it's uh, just an unnecessary extra move. So you're still going to load just against your back leg. Very small shift to where your rear knee stays inside your ankle. Now, all big league hitters, when they advance out, land in the same hitting position. And the first thing that I'm concerned about is that the back knee advances with your stride foot, and you're going to land in a centered position at foot down. And to my eye, you did that pretty well. Yeah, you get a good back knee dress. See that back knee advancing with your stride foot? Mm -hmm. yep. And then toe touch, you're in the same centered position, and you're, still, you're starting to get a back knee pinch here against a closed front shoulder. So that swing sequence we talked about starts from the ground, the back knee pinches, and your hip is starting to turn right now. You can see that front hip beginning to open. Shoulder is closed. It's going to start to rotate open next, and then your hands will come through last. So that begins the torque of your swing. The torque of your swing is the same stretch he's getting on his jersey lines there when his hip opens up against a closed front shoulder. You're getting across your inside oblique. That's your, your side muscles there. So what creates bat speed and what creates arm speed are both the same. The torque that you can get when your hips start to open and your shoulder stays closed. You mentioned at the end of your season last year you felt like you were staying closed really good and you weren't opening up as much. So not only can you cover the whole play, you can see the ball longer, you're going to hit the ball harder because you're getting more torque. So very nice job there. The second two parts of our hitting position is your hands are going to stay back as your body walks forward. You've got very quiet hands. You don't really do much. And the knob of the bat is going to point to the catcher's feet with the tip of the bat tilted over the head. And you're not bad there. You're a little flatter behind the head than I'd like. We'll see if that causes an issue in just a minute when I watch your hands. But the taller we can get above your head, what we're trying to do when your hands get to starting the swing, I want your hands to beat your rear elbow to the body line. And the handle of the bat stays very tight to the shoulder. So when I do video analysis, those are the two things I'm looking for that determine a short swing. You've heard that before, right? Mm -hmm. A short swing. Well, short swing usually is a guy just looking at your swing while you're swinging and saying, well, he's short or he's long. Well, I can actually tell you, are you short or are you long by watching, do your hands beat your elbow to the body line, and is the handle of the bat very tight to the shoulder or at, uh, at the body line? So we'll watch you begin the rest of that swing here. Pretty good, huh? Right there. So when your hands reach your body line, this is the position we call connection. Your hands, your elbow, and that blue stripe on your pants all met up. The handle's tight to the shoulder. That's good, too. And then from there, the reason we call it connection is your rear elbow and your hip 
are going to rotate every frame here together. See how every frame, your elbow's still on that, that blue paint line? And that's going to change when you get fully rotated, probably a frame or two from here, right there. And now at the point of contact, that rear elbow should be just in front of your body line, which it is. So that part's good. So you're very connected. So your swing sequence is, is, is really nice. So you've done a good job from there. That's 99 out of 100 people I've got to work on that with. Okay. Reason why you struggle on the pitch away. The reason why I put Ethier up here is he's one of the better guys, and he is taller and lankier. But see how tall his upper body posture is with his two eyes level out on the pitcher? We want to maintain a tall position all the way out to toe touch, as tall as we can be, and maintain a tall athletic posture through the swing, pitch appropriate. So that ball's just underneath the belt high, but see how tall he is when he gets to that ball. And the foot, when he gets to foot down, will be at about a 45 degree mark when he's, when he's rotating his hips. You, on the other hand, get a little leaned over in your posture. That happens to a lot of guys on tee work because the ball is already in front of you. So see where your eyes are right now versus where his were out on the pitcher. So when we do our tee work, you start your eyes out on the pitcher and just drop your nose to the ball instead of leaning over it so much. So you're doing what I call getting over the baseball. So we need to stay taller with your chest because we do not want weight on your toes when you're in rotation. We want the weight on the midfoot, the arch. So I want to cut your toes off altogether. That's why I put those lines across your toes. I want you to feel like you're on your midfoot, the arch of your shoe, and that's what's going to keep you into heel plant without leaning over too much. When you get on your tiptoes, your whole body's going to fall over towards me. That's why I'm going to pitch away. You do that excessively, and you fall over a lot more. And if you're falling over and coming out of heel plant, you're not going to hit the ball as hard. That front, <coughs> front heel connecting to the ground is the locking mechanism that holds all your power in. See how your heel right here at the end is fluttering off the ground, right? And in fact, it's right at contact. So we're going to try to keep it closed a little more to keep that heel down and keep you off your tiptoes. So when you're spinning with your foot and your heel is off the ground at contact, you're, I know you're on your tiptoes too much. You're on your tiptoes too much because you got a little too much tilt in for as high as that pip, pitch was. So you're going to be as tall as you can with the shoulders and still get to the ball. Naturally, when you have a pitch away or low and away, you're going to have a little more tilt to that. that. That has to happen just to reach the ball. But the more you lean over and the more tilt you have, the slower you rotate. So when pitchers throw you low and away, it's physically impossible to hit that ball as hard or as far because you're going to have more tilt in towards home plate, which means you're not going to rotate as fast. The taller he is as he rotates, the more rotational speed he creates, more bat speed he creates, hit the ball farther. So that's what we're going to work on up there. You don't, you don't have a lot of deficiencies here. You got, a, you got a really clean, good swing. You're connected, you get to a good hitting position. Your two biggest deficiencies are the overload, which is, I mean, you're going to be able to correct that in 30 seconds. Just, you've never heard that before, probably, right? Mm -hmm. And the posture. Posture is going to take you a little longer, but we'll get that today, too. So nice job. You got any questions about what you saw? So of all the major checkpoints I typically do, you do most of them right. It's good.